Hi and welcome to the video. In this video I'm just going to show you how to use the new Fasthost automatic backup and restore that's available on the new WordPress packages. So to start we need to go to the WordPress hosting package that we want to restore. So we're just going to go through here and we are just going to go through to the package we want to restore. So I'm going to that one there. And the first thing we need to do is actually get hold of the files that have been backed up. And I will go through and show you how to restore them. But in the first instance, let's just get hold of those files. So we go to backup and restore. So first things first, we've got website, web space and database. So that's your FTP file. Any files in the FTP is in the web space and the database file itself is in the database. So let's get hold of our web files. Uh, as we can see here, I've got two backups. I haven't had the site particularly long, only two days. Um, so you'd have up to seven of these, but I'm going to restore from the 22nd of July here because that's the most up to date. Now here we've got a couple of options. We can just restore everything, which would just restore logs and WordPress. And before we go ahead and do that, we'll just note that when you do this restore, it's not going to overwrite your live website. It's just going to put these put these files that have been backed up into a separate folder in your FTP space. So you're not going to overwrite anything live by restoring these files, uh, which is worth noting. So if we do, if we don't want to, because this puts these these backups into your web space, obviously uh, it's going to take up space on the server. So if you are limited for space, um. Again, you can always just download these and remove them from the server. So it's not necessarily a long term thing, but say you've only got a couple of gigabytes spare um, and you can't actually back up the entire thing, restore the entire thing. You can go in and you can just uh, choose specifically which files you want or which directories. So if I just did those and restore selected here, it would only do everything in this selection here. But I'm going to back up the whole thing uh, just for this video. So if we go ahead and delete those. I'm just going to go and do WordPress and logs. And as we can see, if you want your whole website, it's this WordPress directory here. OK, so store selected. Now, this can take a little while, depends on the website, the size of your website, yeah, the size of your website. And um, if we go into here, we can see there's a restore in progress. Typically, mine's a fresh install. So, yeah, it's already done. Didn't take too long at all. And you'll also get an email if you if it's taken a little while because you've got a big website. You will get an email to the email address registered on your Fastos account there that you would normally receive uh, correspondence to uh, just to let you know it's done but that's already done so perfect next up we've got our database and you haven't got so many options with this literally just got it's just an sql dump so we just restore that from backup and that's going to put that sql dump into the ftp space again could take a little bit longer mine's very small it's only 11.22 kilobytes there we can see um but we might find that um if it was a, a much bigger database that process might take longer uh, and it has completed and again i'll get an email to confirm that that has completed too so now these backups are available in the ftp space of my website so the next step is going to be connecting to that using sftp or ssh if you're comfortable in this video i'm going to use sftp just because it's a little bit more user friendly uh, so I'll show you how to connect and I'll show you how to restore those backups. Right, OK, so what we need to do now is connect to uh, our FTP space. So I'm still in the same package. I'm going to go to web space here and I'm going to get the SFTP and SSH access details. Now, for this video, I'm going to use uh, FileZilla, uh, which is just an FTP client, but it will allow me to, to connect using SFTP and it's free to download. I'll uh, whack a link in the description to, so, where you, for, so you can see where to download it from. So here we've got the details to connect to. So that's the host address and the port, and we can find our temporary SFTP and SSH credentials. And that means that those credentials will last for 48 hours. So after that time period has elapsed, when I click on there, you get 48 hours uh, for those credentials. So let's have a look at FileZilla. So here I am logged in. It will connect to FileZilla, and I'm going to go to File and Site Manager. And I'm going to, I need to make a new site here. So I'm just going to say video example. And we want our protocol to be SFTP. And the host is going to be this one here. Uh, 
and it says on port 22 so let's go port 22 uh, log on type ask for password is fine so now we need our user credentials so we're going to click on that link there and that's going to pop up there so that's our username and because they're only temporary no need to hide those so i'm going to pop that there and i'm just going to now click connect and it's going to ask me for my password so again let's go back here and just copy that okay so now with any luck this should connect so we're going to get a, a, key, a server key being unknown uh, that's okay uh, it's just because uh, it's a it's a host name that's not necessarily uh, got a SSL certificate attached to it just because obviously everyone's website is different um, so we're going to just click OK on that it's nothing to worry about and we can see we are connected here so we've got our provider restore and our provider restore of the database so our provider restore here is going to have our WordPress and log files that we saw me back up and our database would have gone into here so that is uh, the SQL file so all our main that is completely separate from our main website all our main website files are in this wordpress here so this at the moment is the site that's live nothing has been changed but i've corrupted it i've done something that, that's broken it i'm not really sure what it was so i'm just going to go ahead and restore the entire website now what i would always recommend doing um because there is a delay between potentially when we backed up your website and when you're actually restoring you might want to make a backup of your main wordpress folder before you start overwriting any files now you don't necessarily have to but it'll be my personal recommendation so before i do anything else um i would just recommend backing it up i'm not going to do it in this video because it does take quite a bit of time but I'm not going to do it. When I say quite a bit of time, we're only talking a few, like a few minutes. But obviously, in the interest of keeping the video as brief as possible, we won't be doing that. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to first need to download this WordPress folder. Because if I want to restore the entire website, if I just try and drag it into the directory above, I'm going to get a, a failure. Uh, you'll see there. So what we'll just need to do is just first things first. Let's download that. I'm not going to restore my log files because I don't need to, but my main website, I'm going to go ahead and download. Now, I will pause the video while it does this just because it does, like I say, take a, a little bit of time to download uh, that. And when I say do a backup of your main website, that's all you had to, had to have done is literally dragged it across from there. This is your website, uh, the web files, and this is our local machine. Uh, and we can see I'm currently in my desktop and it's a folder I made called WordPress Site Backup. So I've just literally dragged it from the server put it on to my main computer that I'm working on for this video. But like I say, just pause the video now and I'll come back when that has downloaded. Okay, that's done. Took about five minutes. And so now, now what we've got is we've got the WordPress folder I restored earlier in the video downloaded onto my local machine over here. So now what we need to do is restore that. So in the root of the we're now in the root that's what this means here there's nothing there we are in the root of the the, uh, the web space so we've got our wordpress folder and this is your live website here now i want to make the version i backed up my live version but obviously that one's already there so there are a few ways you could do this i could potentially go into there uh, i could potentially open that and i could copy everything over to here the easiest thing to do, in my opinion, if you want to restore your entire website, is just to go ahead and delete this WordPress folder. Obviously, that's going to take your website offline for a few minutes while you're kind of working. Um, but generally speaking, in my, in my experience, that's the easiest thing to do. I would, again, stress it's a good idea to make a quick backup of that folder before you completely delete it just in case there's anything you've added in between the backup being done by us and this particular moment in time i would also stress at this point if you're getting stuck with any of this contact support they will help you uh, with any of this stuff but i had i'm going to go ahead and delete that wordpress folder so i'm all i'm pressing is my delete key i'm working on windows here i've highlighted that i'm going to press delete you can also uh, right click and delete too i'm going to delete that so again, I'm going to pause the video there because this one will take a little bit longer. Um, it probably take maybe about five, 10 minutes. So I'm just going to pause the video while that does its thing. Uh, we can see it working away there. 
Okay, we've deleted that folder off the uh, out of the FTP space now. So now the last piece of this little puzzle is just to take the folder we previously backed up and drag it across to here. Now again, <laughs> sound like a broken record, but that will take a few minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video there. Okay, website restored now. Uh, like we now we need to restore the database if you needed to. Uh, fortunately, it's a little bit more uh, straightforward. So first thing we need to do is get hold of our database backup, and that is in this folder here, this provider restore DBS one. So let's go into there, and we're just going to copy that across to my local PC there. Okay, so I've got that now, and what I need to do is actually upload this backup using uh, PHP my admin. So if we go back to our Fastoast control panel now, so I'm just back into my WordPress package in the control panel, and we can see here we've got the uh, the database. So click on that, and here it's just going to allow us in a second. There we go to log into PHP my admin. So go ahead and click on that. I'm going to open it in a new window. And here we are logged into PHP my admin. So what we need to do is do a, an import of our backup. Now again, it's probably worth doing an export of this database unless you've completely broken it and doing an export isn't going to help you at all. But just in case there's any any data that's been written since the backup, um, if you've got a fast moving website, if we backed up first thing in the morning and now you're doing this in the evening, uh, any sort of data during that day might be might be useful. So click on the database, make sure that's highlighted. You can see where you are in this uh, in this link up here. So we can see I've clicked on the database and that is currently where I am. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to export. Won't take too long. Just go into export and you can just do a quick one and uh, do it in a format of SQL and go that'll be fine. Um, however, if you want to get more into it, you can go to custom and you can you can back up certain databases and things like that. Um, but like I say, it's more of a precaution. Um, we've got more in-depth videos on how to export a database. But like I say, it's just a, just a precaution. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and import our database that we backed up. So again, we want to make sure that the database is selected. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. And we're going to go on to import. And now we're going to choose file and we are going to choose the file that we downloaded so i mean this is my local local pc's files here uh, we can see we're in my wordpress site backups and i'm just going to choose that backup there just open that and you, generally speaking um you won't need to go through any of this um any of this stuff um but again you can look for it if you want i'm not going to cover it in this video the default should work fine so now we're going to go ahead and click go. But well, before I do, uh, worth noting, this will overwrite any data that was previously on your in your live database. So, like I say, for your comments and things like that, all of that stuff is going to get overwritten with this import. So there we go. If we click go, it should be pretty quick. Mine was a very small backup, um, but there we can see the import has been successfully finished. That's it. We're completely finished. So I've restored my website files in full and I've restored my database files in full. And really, the only other thing that's probably worth noting is that once you're done with your restoring, make sure you just pop back into FileZilla, um, delete any backups that you just download locally. So again, uh, I could download this now because I've got it locally on my machine on my machine here. It just takes up space in your um, in your FTP space. If you leave it sitting in there and you might end up running into like, into sort of uh, into your um, your memory limit. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, so yeah, it's worth just popping through and deleting anything that you've got a copy of. And that's really all well, there is to it, apart from to say, if you get stuck with any of this, I know this has been quite a long video, but I thought it's worth going through in quite a lot of detail because obviously you can be a bit panicky with data. But yeah, any problems, just contact support. I'll be happy to walk you through the process. And that's the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye for now.